Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-Newton-
NGC 7293, the famous Helix Planetary Nebula, best in a moderate telescope. The Helix is shells of gas expelled in the death throes of a star a little bigger than our Sun. At its heart, all that remains is a white dwarf. In the panorama south, the constellation of Eridanus, the river, meanders from Orion to the horizon. Upper right, two stars in the square of Pegasus point to the bright star, Fomalo. Fomalo, just 22 light years away, is in the constellation of Piscis Austrinus, the southern fish. We go closer to identify two faint and half-forgotten patterns. The first is Sculptor, for a reason as obscure as its stars, a sculptor's studio. The second is Fornax, the furnace, equally barren. From the northern hemisphere, the constellation south. The equatorial zone from October to December, our viewpoint for the night sky. It's mid-evening and we're looking north. Bright stars abound. There's Deneb in Cygnus, the swan, and sweeping east, the stars of Lacerta, the lizard. Cepheus, the king, is below, with his queen Cassiopeia in the Milky Way. Next, Camelopardalis, the giraffe. Then Auriga, the charioteer, sporting brilliant Capella. The stars Castor and Pollux are the twins in Gemini. At this season, the Milky Way swings low. Above the Milky Way, the northwestern sky is dominated by the stars of Pegasus, the winged horse, with its distinctive square. Sharing a star with Pegasus, Andromeda, daughter of Cepheus and Cassiopeia. Overhead, Pisces, the constellation of the fishes. To the right, Aries, the ram. And just below, Triangulum, the tiny triangle. This is a wonderful time for observers. The sky is bedecked with brilliant stars. One of the most glittering constellations straddles the Milky Way. With the bright stars Murfak and Algol, it's Perseus, the hero. Southeast is Taurus, with Aldebaran marking the eye of the bull, while upper right, Orion, has the stars Rigel and Betelgeuse. From the tropics, the constellations to the north. The view south from the equatorial zone is virtually clear of the Milky Way. Far to the east, Sirius, brightest of all stars, marks Canis Major, the big dog. The bright star Canopus is to the west. Canis Major just nuzzles the Milky Way, as do the stars above. With Rigel and Betelgeuse the brightest, this is Orion, the hunter. Rigel is close to the source of the meandering constellation of Eridanus, the river, running all the way to Achenar, its brightest star. Most of Eridanus is rather faint. From the sixth largest constellation to five much smaller, the first is Columba, the pattern of the dove. To the right, the two stars of Calum, the chisel, and farther right, Horologium, the constellation of the clock. Beneath is Dorado, the goldfish, and next door, Reticulum, the reticle, an old instrument for measuring star positions. Leaving the large and small Magellanic clouds just above the horizon, we move toward the southwestern sector of the sky. At the top, the bright star Fomalo marks Piscis Austrinus, the southern fish. Lower left, the triangle of Hydrus, the little water snake, and above, with Achenar between, Phoenix, the mythical bird. Below, two more birds, Tucana, the pattern of the toucan, and Grus, the crane. To the southwest, the pattern of Indus, named in honor of native North Americans. 
To complete this southern panorama, we identify four constellations in the upper southwestern sky. The first bears little relation to its name, Fornax, the barren pattern of the furnace. Upper left, Cetus, the whale or sea monster, is a more convincing depiction. But Sculptor, the sculptor's studio, is as abstruse as its stars. To the right, however, Aquarius, the water bearer, has been a recognizable figure since Babylonian times. Our tour of the equatorial skies.